Good morning and welcome to the Crypto Day Morning. Today's date comes in that of uh, Friday, 8th of uh, February, 2019. My name is Derek. I'd like to welcome you all, Bets Trades, and of the like with it, each his own risk and their own reward. Yet another green candle on the NLC2 for everyone but one so far since January 30th. Or that of 8 of 9 so far has been green. Nice. And... I talked more or a lot about this in last night's video. I like how it's holding short term and it's a current move coming into play right now within the 18. But if you want to uh, hear more about this, a lot of detailed information, both uh, technically and fundamentally and case use scenarios within that video. I, after that, made a video on uh, precious metals, gold and silver, it's doing well short term, breaking through on the one hour time frame, coming back to this little area here in at 13.14. Silver as well, breaking higher in at 15.85 and on its daily time frame, breaking out above this 18 average could have an interesting uh, situation within Bitcoin. It's uh, barely up over 1%. Still hanging in there within the 18 average of high or lows and resisting several days since the uh, February the 2nd period. It's so easy to draw a trend line connecting these points as it would be connecting some of this uh, down move as well. None of those down moves have uh, been destroyed. However, it has also not really broken down other than a small leg lower here, small leg lower there. And it's been holding this more recent support level at around 33.40. But the story of the day for me seems to be that of Litecoin. Its current price is $37.13. It has broken nicely above this 18 average of highs and these levels of resistance in the uh, low to mid 34 area. The gain so far today is in at 13 and a third percent. And among such, we've had from this correctionary move, the rally from mid-December, which topped uh, at, the, at the end of the first week of January, establishing and holding very well support, uh, roughly but barely microscopically below $30. And now here we have it set so that uh, getting above this level of resistance, uh, this has the potential to have a decent size moving forward. The next key level, I think, breaking out above here that it should uh, go to, and probably relatively quickly, would be about $50. And crossing this against Bitcoin next. Within this, we have this level of resistance established from its uh, end of first week of January levels at about the uh, 1 to 100 ratio, or 0.01. We're coming back to where it came from. Where it came from was this neckline on this inverted head and shoulders pattern. For you can make a left shoulder here, the head and the right shoulder in here, having its break higher, but more importantly, to having that leg higher, holding that move. Yes, it took many days. And as a trader, I like it this way to make some time, to like take a while to do these things so that it can show the patterns and the systems in play in here several days of just going sideways like this doesn't make it a surprise for me that a day like this is to occur it also meant that oh what would you think would happen next a big big leg higher or a big leg lower of its same equivalency and the answer would have been higher so therefore it's doing its thing and i traded last before here at the uh 99 handle which would have been up in here so the uh, start of february i would have sold it I wasn't able to buy back because it didn't go down much. It went to 95.8. I was waiting to buy back at like 91 or 92, something around here at the time. But that didn't go through. But I knew that if it was going to break above this resistance, I didn't want to sell at 103 or 104 or 106. It was probably going to go up to, I thought, 110, which is pretty much where it did. The high is 112, so I could have got microscopic better. could have done obviously nicer but I got 109 9 and whatever other numbers after that when this broke out of it it does it fast its big move happened as it was breaking this level of resistance and within that particular hour it did it within that particular 15 minute time frame 
it did it. And I'm looking at this for the first time, these shorter term time frames. And I was only predicting that it was, I didn't think it was going to be that fast. I really didn't. I was confident enough that this move, without seeing the short term time frame this morning, was going to be fast. But to happen in less than five minutes, I would have predicted like an hour, 40 minutes. But that's the whole point of, like I, I've been saying, when it breaks a key level, it just goes. And this line, which has been in there for quite some time, was where it really broke out from on the lower end. I mean, it's just crazy. And it also means if you're waiting for the break of such, I mean, you have to be fast. A lot of people are sleeping at this time and everything, but uh, when they go, they go. Let's take a look at this one minute now, and I'm just curious to see how many minutes this took now. This is just awesome. So one, two, three, four, under five minutes. Under five minutes from 3.50 New York time to 3.54. Just magnificent. And next up, I watched this video this morning entitled Top 11 Suspicious Things About Kadra Ka CX, an exchange from Canada, which is pulling off what looks to be, I would think, an obvious exit scam. And Wells Fargo's second blackout in a week. Which means customers are having issues using their apps and doing whatever they need and transactions within their bank and well obviously this is causing uh, customers to be very unhappy as as they should be and when we look at both of those those are situations where you don't control the keys or you don't control the money so for myself when i when I look at my portfolio, I got currency and exchanges and one that's in the same vote as the, uh, or a similar vote rather, as the Quadrica CX uh, exchange, which is Cryptopia. They've been down since January 14th, going through what has been a theft, whether it's an actual theft or whether it's an exit scam of some sort. I'm unsure. I'm hoping that I get my funds back. But I got myself in a financial position where I realize the exchanges have done very well to make me profit, but where do I have my funds? The majority of them are in my hardware wallet. Then it's gold and silver, then it's the accumulation of the exchanges, and then it's fiat currency in actual paper rectangles and of the like. And I got a whole bunch of real nickels, I mean a lot, but they don't accumulate too much. And that is because when bad things happen, I'm going to want to have currency on my hardware wallet of cryptos, Bitcoin and Litecoin, and I'm going to want to have precious metals, gold and silver, in the real physical form. And I can remember at my last job, I'll call it, where I was reading a book about poker written by Mr. Doyle Brunson talking about getting robbed like as almost a regular occasion and it's an unfortunate thing that he had to go through that sometimes took decent amounts of his bankroll away so I feel feel very similar to that if worst case scenario happens to me within Cryptopia and reading that book really helped me a lot as far as progressing into becoming a very good poker player this is now well over a decade ago so here's some mathematics, and if you can think about any type of sports betting, this is a way I like to think of it as. Whenever you're in poker, always think about like, the mathematical pot odds. Whether you're calling a bet, do you have the best hand, you're getting 2 to 1 odds, you need to be 33% likely, or you're getting plus 200 on 2 to 1 odds, all that type of stuff, but I like it for actual just regular betting. So assume you're playing a $2, $5 no limit game, $500 buy-in, and you're on the button in a hand, and you have 5-3 offsuit, which is like a foldable hand by no, by for sure, at least unless you want to get fancy. Player besides you raises to 15 or a 3x bet with uh, all folding prior. So the prop here is by raising, or 3-betting, 
Will the player and the two blinds fall to your bet? You control the odds. For if you raise to 25, which is the minimum raise, you'd be winning the raise to 15 plus the blinds of 2 and 5, which would be 22. So you're looking at getting odds of like minus 112. If you look at that as sports betting, and if you say, hey, I think there's about a 60% chance that's going to be a fold, uh, then you could just take that bet. Although that would be incorrect. I could tell you right now that if you're raising to 25, you will get them to fold close to 0% of the time. But if you raise it to 40 or 75, then you're actually going to really realistically get folds. And if you are one that doesn't mind playing like minus 350, minus 300, minus 400, or play chalk bets amongst uh, sports betting, this is exactly how I look at this as. So therefore, if you can come in and say, you know what, I can come in and maybe go in between 40 and 75, maybe put a raise to like 55. That means the person's got to call 40 on the other end. If I raise to 55. So I'm going 55 to win 22. That's like two and a half to one odds. And this is a minus 250 bet that I think is going to win like say 75, 80% of the time. So it's profitable. And thus, when that happens, it makes it a good bet. But I like to look at this even further. For when you lose, or at times when you lose, and you lose when at least one person calls or raises, if it's not a raise and it's a call, then you can get a flop. And sometimes a flop might come 3-3 three, three, ace. And, well, good thing you got a free roll entry because now if you did say raise it to, say, 50, now you got a free pot worth over $100. And I say free pop because a bet was closed. You say you raised to 50, the person called, it was a losing bet. But a call gives you a new opportunity on the play. So that's how I look at a lot of those things. So when I'm playing poker, I'll look at the numbers of the pot odds in this format, see, okay, mathematically, is it a good play? And even more advanced, what's the chances I just get a call? What kind of likelihood will I have good situations? And I use the example of 3-5, albeit suited is better, because ne they never put you on hands it when you hit something like this. Your straights can oftentimes require an ace, which uh, is what your opponent will have. So if it comes to ace-2-4, then you, you will get your ace-king and your ace-queens to play you. So, so I look at different situations like that. If it's got good playability to it, I mean, I want to use like the worst playability hand I can find, which 5-3 offsuit is about such, then that, that works out fine. And then 3-5 ace flop, then you can work out pretty well. But I have no problem if it comes, say, 3-9 ace to just easily check fold, or, or if he leads out fold kind of deal. Thank you for tuning in. Have, have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.